Let's talk about the Doppler effect. This is on page T um, of PACE 1117 in Physical Science. And this is a rather challenging concept, all right? And they devote, it's right at the end of the PACE. And uh, in the reading section, there, you know, there's a whole page here, page 29 with a picture and then all the math. And uh, then all of a sudden you're at the end of the pace and you have to do this page T and then the next thing is a checkup and the next thing is a self test and the pace test and it's like ah! But um, let me, let's just give a bird's eye view of what the Doppler effect is. And then um, I'm going to share with you and I want you to talk to your parent or supervisor and, and ask them what they specifically want you to do to handle this, okay? <clears throat> but the Doppler effect means that as a moving object is producing sound, so we like to use the illustration here of a train blowing its horn, and as it's approaching, um, let's say where, you're, where a person is standing, so as it's coming, it's producing a, a horn blowing sound. This is true even of a truck. You know, you can hear a truck or a car, and, and as you're listening, you can hear a a humming sound and then as it passes the uh, the pitch seems to drop and then as it goes by it's a lower pitch so it's kind of like eh, um, eh, that's the higher pitch eh, and then that's where the normal pitch is right as it passes and then, um, it roars as it goes by and it stays at that pitch so it's eh, the whole time it's coming eh, and then it continues lower. All right, you got it now? You got the sound effects? <laughs> it was probably too loud on the microphone. Sorry about that. So the higher pitch is a higher frequency. Okay, we measure that in hertz. So the sound is being produced. Those longitudinal waves are being compressed. So they're kind of closer together. So there's more waves hitting your eardrum because what's literally happening is the train produces, let's say if you did this in slow motion, the train produces a sound which would travel through the air at a certain speed. But before it's not just sitting there, it's moving. So it's moving toward you and it produces the next blast of sound. And then while that sound is in the air, the train is moving even closer and it produces another blast of sound. So those sounds, instead of traveling like this, this far apart, this one's already in the air and it's moving. And now another one, instead of being this far apart, is closer. And then as they're moving, there's another one that's produced, okay? And so all of these sound waves are hitting our eardrum closer together, more compressed, which means more sound waves in that given time. That's frequency, how many sound waves in a, in a period of time. So that higher frequency is the and then as it passes us and you're standing there, you're hearing the sound as soon as it's produced. And then it moves away. And now as the sound waves are being produced and coming back towards us, the train is moving further away. So by the time it produces the next sound, now the sound waves are further apart. And then it continues that way. So each sound wave that's produced is further apart than when they were being produced coming towards us. So we have the Now, there's a lot of math involved, okay? So on page uh, T, it walks through all the steps of how to calculate, and there's a lot of math. Now, here's what I personally, okay? Now again, you have to talk to your parent or to your um, supervisor if you're in a school and ask them what they want you to do. Here's what I have my students do. I encourage them to sit at the testing table where as a supervisor I can see what they're doing and I sit there with them and kind of get them started, walk them through, okay, and have them try to follow the math, kind of like working the same problem that's in the pace and just not copying the answers from the score key but checking their work after every step, okay, to see if they're getting the same thing. Um, if I have time or if I have an older student who can sit with them, I'll say, okay, keep the score key over here. Just kind of walk them through. But students tend to need a lot of guidance, okay? I don't think it's a reasonable expectation for students to do this page on their own. Um, they, they did algebra, either they're in algebra this year or they did algebra last year. Now they're doing geometry and all the math involved here is like, ah! 
and it's a lot, okay? So I think it's a reasonable expectation to have a teacher or an older student sit with them and guide them through it, or even copy the answers um, with, some, with some guidance and understanding. Now, the challenge comes when you get to the checkup, okay? Because there is one problem on the checkup that involves walking through these steps again. But then it's not on the self-test and it's not on the PACE test. Okay, so I'll just, I'll comfort you with that thought that uh, you will not have to do it come self-test, PACE test. What you do need to know is the name of this um, concept that the sound changes as it's coming toward you and it's a higher pitch. That concept is Doppler effect. You need to know that term. You also need to know and understand that there's a certain um, frequency in Hertz as it's right here in front of you and it's going to be a higher frequency as it's approaching and then it's going to be a lower frequency as it moves away. So you have three numbers. The middle number where it's next to you, all right? The higher number, the bigger number is a higher frequency that's as it's approaching and then the lower as it moves away. That's the that's the concept that you really need to nail even if the math part of it seems a little confusing. Personally, what I do, okay, in our Christian school is when we get to the checkup, I know my students. I know if they're kind of mathy inclined and they tend to do well with math, I want them to do that problem on the checkup. So I have them study that page. I have them re, you know, work through um, and do the math and take off points if they get any wrong. For my students who struggle with math or science and it's just really not their thing and they're just doing their best to make it through, um, I cross out all that math on the checkup for the Doppler effect, but then I increase the point value for the previous questions, okay? So instead of being like two and a half points, it'd be like three points for each of the other questions. <clears throat> and that way it still works out to 100%, but I'm not holding them accountable for doing all of that math because they're not gonna be held accountable on the self-test or pace test. So again, it's up, you need to talk to your supervisor. Don't just say, well, Mr. Anger on the video said, <laughs> it's up to whoever's in charge, but uh, let them watch this and, and maybe they can then sit down and help you with it and, and uh, maybe you'll catch on to it. All right, so I hope you do well um, as you move into the end of this pace. We just have like three more paces, 18, 19, and 20 to do before the end of this year.